Let's go! Ah, ah, the Eric Gilbert story won't stop. All right, my goodness, these Instagram rumors that are floating out there. And I wake up and I see my inbox filled with AG2 questions. So what I'm going to do is, as you guys know, the story drives me wild. So at the end of the video, we'll get to it. Because on Fridays, it's all about your comments. I'm going to reply to as many as I possibly can. We're talking Max Johnson, Austin Deculus, everything. So as always, subscribe to this channel, like the videos, and the live stream schedule. You guys know. It goes down Tuesdays and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Central. Let's get to it. Well, as always, we go through as many of these comments as possible. And if you're a diehard LSU fan, you're going to love it because there's so many different things that we talked about this week. Starting off here with Branson Cat. By the way, Branson Cat also said he's about to be a journalism major at LSU. As a journalism graduate myself, Pick a different major. Kidding. But understand, you're getting into an industry that doesn't make a whole lot of money. Anyway, uh, the more important thing is that he said he was a teammate of Jacoby Matthews at Ponchatoula. Uh, Jacoby Matthews is the best, or arguably the best football player they've ever produced. And he's a safety in the class of 2022. And this is good that Branson Cat points out that he is a great leader. And normally whenever you hear teammates or friends or coaches or whatever talk about players, it's always great when you hear them say the word leader because we already know they're talented players. But if you say he's a great leader, especially if it's a former teammate, uh, that means more because that means he has high character. Now, I don't know Jacoby Matthews personally. I've never even heard him do an interview or really even watched him play a whole lot. But he is a five-star safety in the state of Louisiana. He is a major priority. And, of course, check out our video on Taiji Hill in the future of the 2022 class. Uh, Chewy said, just watch Max's drills. He has that hop in his step even when he flicks or throws the ball back to the coach. Uh, that's because winning is not first, not accolade. So, yes, Max Johnson went 2-0 and in his starts last season. But don't just get carried away with wins, okay? Is it Miles Brennan's fault that his defense was horrible and his pass protection was really spotty versus both Mississippi State and and um, and Missouri? No, that's not his fault. Uh, we have done plenty of film studies on that very thing. Yes, it is better to have a mobile quarterback when your pass protection is spotty, and that definitely helped out having Max Johnson's ability to run. But the pass protection shouldn't be as spotty as it was. So don't get carried away just with 2-0 and or 1-2 and because quarterbacks is not a winning stat. Okay, Win uh, that's horrible. Winning is not a quarterback stat. Okay, the team wins, not the quarterback. Now, the quarterback is the number one person which determines whether or not you win a game. And they can ultimately be the deciding factor. But I can make an argument that turnovers, LSU winning huge in the turnover margin versus Florida and Ole Miss, and Keishon Butte uh, were ultimately the differences in, in those games as much as Max Johnson. So, yeah, I, I trust you, Max was 2-0. and He was excellent in those. Well, he was excellent versus Florida, took a step back against Ole Miss. So, before we get to the next question, you guys know that – I love producing content on this channel. And the best way you could support me, as always, is watching all the videos all the way through, helping out that algorithm. But you can also donate to me directly. Snapchat. I said Snapchat. I'm an idiot. Cash App, Venmo. You can find it at Carter the Power. And then, of course, during premieres and live streams, the Super Chat is always open because... I am working on a Max Johnson film study, which will be a reply to my Miles Brennan film study. Unfortunately, with um, film studies, I can't monetize those. So, if you want to throw a donation down and uh, help out the growth of this channel, it'll greatly be appreciated, okay? Uh, I was supposed to be walking bug, for, but I decided to do this. Anyway, 
Let's go back to your comments. Let's go. But Ultra Rider, I love the dog. Look at this pup. You guys know we are pro dog channel. 2021 Natty. I'm loving that. Path to product. Dang. UCLA has the number two returning production, according to Bill Stats. Interesting game one for LSU. So this was my favorite video of the week. And I've explained uh, plenty of times the difference in content. So some videos I do is based off of news. So like the Taiji Hill video yesterday, it broke that he committed to LSU. So I did a video about it. But my favorite types of videos are, are deep dives. And this is one of those videos, kind of like our Texas video we talked about last week, where I find a perspective or a new stat or something like that and dive deep. And what was funny was there was a new stat that came out that ranked LSU number one. It's called RTI. And if you want to learn more about RTI, I'll link uh, the video down below or you can watch it. I think I could put a little gray bar up there. And that stat has LSU with the most talented roster in terms of returning production, transfers, 247 composite, and all of that. Well, there's different metrics that measure how much production you actually return. This one, Bill Connolly's stats, has UCLA with the number two returning production, while RTI has UCLA with the number 11 returning production. Bill has LSU with 31st in the country with the returning production, but RTI has LSU number one. And we move on here to a new viewer to the channel. I love this name, Patrick Tomlinson Tomlinson. Uh, my first thing is, was there a Patrick Tomlinson already taken? And the second thing is, did you say, okay, I'm going to be Patrick Tomlinson Tomlinson. Nobody's name is Patrick Tomlinson Tomlinson. Anyway, I, I like the bandana. I like the thumbs up. I like the sunglass game. But anyway, uh, here's PTT. I wouldn't worry about the starting five OL just yet. We're way too early to really have any idea who's actually going to start. And someone else uh, made a comment about um, don't rush to judgment on Cardell Thomas and Anthony Bradford because offensive alignment are slow to develop. Whoever that commenter what was, his name slips by mine. Uh, you're looking at his comment right here you were right because the very next day Ed Orgeron said Anthony Bradford is starting to come into his own and he could potentially be a starter next season so yeah I do agree with PTT that we shouldn't rush to judgment on the LSU offensive line however this unit was not that good last season and some of you have pointed out well we can't pick up an A gap or or B gap blitz I believe that was DBU7 by the way, DBU7, you're so freaking jacked. You make chubby people like me who run a bunch but is still chubby feel so bad about themselves. I'm kidding, but still. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, it's hard for me to feel great about an offensive line that is returning. So, yeah, if you come back for another year, in theory, you're going to get better. But they did miss a lot of easy assignments, and we have – a thousand film studies you can watch on that very thing. So, yes, PTT, I agree. It is still very early in the process to say anything about the offensive line. One thing that is positive is in Max Johnson's interview this week, he pointed out that Jake Peets is teaching the quarterbacks about protections. One thing that could help out this offensive line is quarterbacks pre-snap helping the offensive line with protections. That to you too, Tasha. Tasha's new to the channel. Uh, she's big in the LSU Facebook world. I love analytics. Many fans do, so keep it coming. And this goes along with our RTI video. Um, and Tasha, thank you for all your support of the channel. Same thing here for Cliff. Now, here's Drodro uh, with an Austin Deculus comment from our practice footage video. And it's good that Austin Deculus is working on his biggest flaw, working on getting that first quick step. That is his biggest weakness. It always has been. Some of you want him to move to guard. You think that's his best position because that takes away 
speed rushers from the outside attacking him, especially if considering uh, LSU's going to do more five-man protection. So that's why I like people like Drojo, because he points out those little things. And all righty, this Eric Gilbert story won't die. From the Rivals Godfather. Huh? Uh, that's just kind of a funny name. So, look, Mike is his name. He works for Rivals. I have a lot of respect for uh, a lot of different reporters I know at Rivals. So, look, there are layers to this conversation, and some of it doesn't have a whole lot to deal with Eric Gilbert. And we're going to go through all these different things really quickly, okay? The first thing is Eric Gilbert could be in Baton Rouge just to get his things, just to see his family, or his family, his friends that he made at LSU. There, there's a thousand different things. He could just be there training. I don't know. You don't know. Um, but he also could be there visiting with the coaching staff for a potential comeback. Now, let me respond to the people that say, uh, you guys don't believe in second chances. Uh, da, 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 da. Quit with that holier than thou mentality because I hear it all the time. You don't believe in second. Everybody believes in second chances. Everybody has gotten a second chance at something. That is not the point of someone saying we should move on. Because this is not Eric Gilbert's second chance. His second chance was with Florida, and he let them down, okay? And I understand. He is an 18-year-old kid, highest-rated tight end of all time. Matt Ryan visited him at his high school to give him the Gatorade Athlete of the Year. Not football player, but Athlete of the Year in high school. I understand the pressures and all the different things that can come with being Eric Gilbert. And I totally understand his talent. You guys, you've been following me for a while. Some of you have. Um, you know how I feel about him and how much better he got at, at blocking throughout the season and how great of a talent he actually is. And I would, you know, if everything were to align, I'd be fine with them coming back to the team. But quit it. I, I cannot say this enough. Quit it with that second chance BS because you're not some saint saying that, oh, well, uh, you don't believe in second chance. Stop it. Because there are these things called diminishing returns, all right? When you put so much effort into trying to bring someone back in who may or may not be eligible to play, there might be something off the field that we don't know. I'm not here to speculate. He could have signed with another school or whatever. There's going to be some hurdles getting him back on the team if he wants to come back. When you're a coach of a Division One football team and you have a Division One coaching staff, there are so many different things you have to focus on when you're the head coach and when you keep having to worry about may or may not bringing, uh, may or may not, if you keep having to worry about bringing back a guy who may or may not actually come back. He might decide to go to Georgia or wherever. Then you spent all those resources, all your energy in getting someone to potentially come back when you could have been using that energy to maybe recruit Jake Johnson, the number one tight end in the next class, or using that energy to find that final slot for this class or finding a safety or focusing on whatever. And then if you as a coaching staff continue to focus on this one guy who, by the way, left the team when the numbers on the roster were dwindling at an alarming rate to the point where we barely had enough guys to even dress out and play versus Florida and Ole Miss, Eric Gilbert let the locker room down then and at the same time, the same locker room is viewing this staff using more energy to potentially bring them back now when they had already tried to do that after the first time he left the team. So what happens when that happens is all of that energy is on this one player. 
And we have proven this time and time again in multiple ways on this channel. One player doesn't make a team. They just don't. It is power, our, LSU, boom! I think we're doing uh, pasta or something like that tonight. I don't know. Ha <laughs> ha! We'd love some pasta.